You, uh, you speak English? You're from the Ute Nation, ain't you? You got a real bad banged up leg there. You ought to let me take a look at it. It might even be broke. If it was, I could fix it for you. Now, I ain't gonna hurt you. But I don't want you hurting me neither, see? Burn it, Buster. I'm gonna help you whether you like it or not. That knife ain't gonna do you a whole lot of good, but I'm gonna take that away from you. but yourself. I'm going to take a look at that leg now. I didn't like having to do that, buddy, but there ain't no other way. You ain't gonna get no better mood. Promise at least 200 by next week. We gotta deliver. I tell you, if Hoss doesn't catch out of that herd pretty soon, I don't know what we'll do. Hey, what? Found him out by Cooper's Creek. Got a busted leg in pretty bad shape. What are you getting tied up for? Uh, that's exactly the reason he ain't altogether happy with this situation. Well, what is he, half mean or half hungry? I don't know. I mean, it's a little of both, Joe. Looked like you'd been out there three or four days to me. Joe, you better bring Doc Hadley out of here. Right, Pop. You understand English? Hey, take it easy. You'll be all right. Ute. Yeah, I know he's a Ute. Wonder what he's doing out here. The Ute abandoned their wounded. They live like packs of wolves. They are savage animals. All right, Martinez. You talk the language, don't you? See. Si. Let's get him inside. We'll see what you can find out. <laughs> Just take it easy. Bring tired him plumb out. For all the gratitude he's showing, you'd think I brought a wildcat home instead of a human being, wouldn't you? Oh, he's much worse than a wildcat, senor. The youth has been taught to hate the white man from childhood. And this one, he has learned his lesson well. Here is food, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, good. Thank you, Hopsang. 
Mm-hmm. What's Grumpy's doing? This is good. He will not eat it, senor. Why? He ought to be starving. You'd feed their prisoners food soaked in alkali. It amuses them to see them rolling on the ground, screaming in agony. Well, Martinez, you stay here with them. See if you can find out what his name is and all about him. Uh -huh. Be back at 12. Hello, Hans. Oh, hi, Doc. How's the patient? Well, apparently all right. He ate all that meal, and he's in there with Martinez now. Uh -huh. Better see him. He's in there. Senor. Well, Martinez? His name is Tatu. He's the son of a youth war chief. And he has his father's poison in his veins. What'd you tell him that... Uh... We just want to be his friends. I did, senor. Oh, what'd he say? <laughs> he said he will cut the throats of all white beasts, especially your senor, because you're the one who threw away his hinuda. His what? A hinuda is a metal shaped like a bird. To a ute, it is a protection against evil. Oh, so that's what that was in his hand. I know it's all very important to him. Oh, he's a great honor given only to the best hunters. To die without it is a great shame. Hmm? Well, you better stick close, Martinez. We may have to explain a couple of things. You do not need me, senor. He understands your tongue. Well, why didn't he say so? I told you, senor Ben. He is a youth, and he cannot be trusted. All right. Go on back to the corral, Martinez. We'll, uh, we'll tend to him. Thank you. At least the leg's not broken. Oh, sorry about that, Doc. Yeah, that's all right. I've handled worse. I once fixed the leg of a mule. Hoss, administer the anesthetic. Where is it in your bag? Hoss, administer the anesthetic. <coughs> oh, that anesthetic. Oh. Little buddy, I hate to do this to you again, but you don't leave me much choice. <coughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I won't need any further assistance. Paul, that metal Martinez is telling us about, you think it'd do any good if I rode out there and could find it and bring it back to him? Well, I don't know if it'd help any. She wouldn't make anything any worse. I think I'll do that. See you at one.
stop saying your supper ready? On stove, Mr. Cartwright. I'm getting it right away. Well, I can't find those receipts anyway. Well, they should be in that second drawer, Joe. Well, don't worry about it now. Supper's about to be served. The horse isn't gonna like missing supper one bit. <laughs> I think he's got enough in reserve to tide him over. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, looks delicious as usual. Mm -hmm. Ah, thanks, Pa. It's the first time in months I haven't had to fight for my supper. <laughs> You've managed to survive. Pass me the bread. Hey, what in tar... Too, I'm getting sick and tired of your peculiar ways of saying thanks. We're just trying to help you, boy, doggone it, but you're making it awful tough. Yeah, we're just trying to be friends, boy. But we don't want to hurt you. Doggone it. I went to a whole lot of trouble to get this for you today. I brought your medal. You're convinced you're gonna kill me. I'm gonna give you a chance, because I'm coming up there. Boss. got nothing to be afraid of now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Give me the pistol. Hoss very brave. No. Tattoos just happen to be a lousy shot for which I'm very happy. Uh -huh. yeah, pretty rare job. All the soil is gone anyhow. Yeah. All right, let's see how it stands up. Try it, Tattoo. Tattoo stand? Of course, of course. Sure, stand up and walk. Tattoo cannot walk. Well, of course you can. Why, son, those muscles you tore loose, they're all well now. Come on, come on. Doctor, you are good medicine man. You take fire for my leg. But you cannot heal leg. That is why my chiefs leave me in mountain. Because I, I cannot hunt. I cannot run. Not ride. Tatu, your chiefs are wrong. Chiefs never wrong. Oh, well, you'll have to convince him. I've got at least a dozen other patients to take care of. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you, Doc. Now, look here, Tatu. The leg is well. I did not seek to come here. I was to die. You say you are my friend, but you shame me. Shame you? Now, why do I want to do a thing like that? They take my horse and say, Tatu, son of Awatek, must wait for the great darkness to come. Alone, I wait till the sun travels down. But the great darkness does not come. And I wait. The wind is cold. And my leg screams. 
three times the sun crossed the sky. I have no water, no food. The great darkness comes with the rising of the fourth sun. The pain is gone, and I sleep. And I run with the wind to kill the buffalo. In my eyes, I see the gentle ways of my mother. And then you find me and bring back the pain. Now you shame me because I cannot walk. Now, Tatu, that ain't so. I ain't shamed you and that leg is healed. Hoss lies. I cannot walk. All right, so you can't walk. If you can't walk, you can't hunt, can you? So you won't be needing this anymore. Hey, look, you stubborn coyote, you're walking. Us. I am still Hunter. You bet you are. You care for lemon or cream, Miss Julie? <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Now remember, you serve Mrs. Planner first, then Julie. I get it. First old lady and then young one. Right. And, and use a good china. We gotta convince Mrs. Flanner we're fancy enough for me to take her daughter out. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go through it one more. My, oh, my, oh, my. Ain't we getting fancy? What are you and Hobson gonna be doing next? Dancing a minuet? A little gal must really be something to turn you into a regular parlor room Romeo like this, Joe. Mm. I thought you were out in the barn fixing the stalls. Yeah, I, uh, I thought you was out chasing them wild horses. Well, it's, that's what I'm fixing to do right now. I'm gonna go round them up right now. Why don't you get the stalls fixed? I may bring back a whole herd. And you uh, plan on inviting them for tea? Why do you tear boards down, then put boards up? <laughs> I reckon a lot of things we do look sort of silly to you, don't they? Yes, but many of your ways are good. You know, I reckon we could probably learn something from your people, too. It is possible, but... But what? Do white men leave their brothers to die like my chiefs did to me? Well, I'll tell you, Todd, too, there's lots of different kind of white men. I reckon most of us do whole life sacred, yeah. That is good. Tell me something. Where'd you learn to speak English so good, anyhow? My father was a scout for the white soldier. He said they were the savages. They hunted my people and killed old men, women, children. That is why he turned away from them. Hey, my brother, have any luck? Not a sign of it. I don't know, that whole herd just seems to have disappeared in thin air. We need 30 more head by the end of the week. I just don't think we can deliver. Uh, oh, well, I'll tell you what, you, you don't need to worry about them horses anyway. You got something serious to worry about. Oh, yeah, what's that? Like how to pour tea for that little gal and her mama. Hey, they're not here already, are they? I better get in there to hop, and get them to rehearse again. Hey, Joe. Joe, you might make use of that tub, too. Tub? Yeah. What is a tub? A tub? Well, sir, a tub is one of the great benefits of civilization. As a matter of fact, you could make use of one yourself right now. Hey, Bill, take care of the horse, will you? Come on. You go ahead and get undressed, and I'll get you a towel. Tattoo, this water is for you, not for the clothes. For Tattoo? Sure. Hot water for cooking, 
And also to kill bugs. Yeah, well, you're sort of getting the idea. <laughs> Oss, you up there? Yeah, be right down, Paul. Look, you go ahead and get in there and take you a good bath. It ain't gonna kill you, I promise you. I've done it once or twice myself. Probably be needing this. As soon as you get through, come on downstairs. We got some company. No, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, thank you. Although I'm sure that things are, are much more informal here in the West, I still insist on meeting the families of the young men that my daughter Julie knows. <laughs> well, I think you're very wise. And I must say that I think that Joseph has a very, very nice family. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, my other son, Hoss. Hoss, uh, this is Mrs. Flanner and her daughter Julie. How do you do? Happy to meet you, ma'am. You too, Julie. Thank you. Hope you'll pardon my appearance, but I've put in a pretty hard day's work. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with honest toil, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, no, ma'am, and it does something for my appetite, too. Mm. Yeah, would you care for a little more tea, Mrs. Flatter? No. Oh, oh, no, no, thank you. Do all clean, Hoss. Get out of here. Hoss, say I should come. <laughs> Get him upstairs. Get him. Go, Hoss. Please leave me. Oh, come on, Tonto. You didn't mean no harm. You didn't know no better, that's all. Besides, I, I thought it was kind of funny. You ought to seen the expression on that old lady's face. <laughs> Everyone would laugh at Tonto, like Hoss. Look, I've been laughed at myself a few times. Don't take yourself so seriously. Little Joe will hate Tonto. He won't do no such a thing. I'll tell you what. They're busting out some horses down there in the lower corral right now. You come on with me and I'll show you how much he hates you. Come on. That's one very strong horse, senor. Yeah, he's a tough one, all right. You think you can break him by tomorrow? We're 20 heads short, we can sure use him. Not tomorrow, senor. Today. I'll uh, give him a try. Yeah, we better get back to work, too. I might want to see this for a minute. Tattoo, hardly recognize you with your clothes on. Hey, little Joe, I want to tell you how... Uh, forget it. Let's forget it. What's happened's happened. Don't worry. Julie and I will get back together. Are you sure? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to worry about it, and I don't want you to either. 
Why, you Diablo? And like I said, it's a tough animal. Well, I try him again tomorrow. All right. Let me try. Oh, Tato, you've already had one accident. Please. This is man's work. Tato, try. Go ahead. Let him try. All right, go ahead. Be careful. Go get him. Joe, let's go. See All right, Bob. Take it easy. Don't lean on that fence too hard, girls. I have seen the Indian who could tame the wild animal, as if putting a spell on it. knew the Indian was as wild as he is. Well, he was... he was ready to go back. That's all there's to it. Yeah, I, I reckon so. But there for a while, I thought he really wanted to learn, you know? Well, it must be very difficult to break the habits and instincts of a lifetime. Yeah, I reckon so. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! You won't believe it. You right. just won't believe All it. All right, just take it easy now. Believe what? Tattoo. He just right in. And he bring a whole herd of horse with him. Hey, careful, careful! No seats in that section! Uh, what do you think of that, Bob? Oh, man, look at all those pretty horses. Are these enough for your contract? Enough? Oh, <laughs> Tattoo. <laughs> but, Tattoo, how'd you get that many all by yourself? This says I am best hunter. Tattoo knows this is lead stallion. Herd would follow. Oh, sure did. Well, now I can fill that contract. You boys got your work cut out for you. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> Get going. Tattoo, you must be pretty hungry. Hop Singh, what about it? Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> it was I, the Indian, the savage, the wolf who found the herd. I call you a wolf? Huh. I should have called you a fool. Or a traitor to your own breed. A traitor? You call Tatu a traitor? A fool? Those horses that you brought in so proudly, huh? You know where they're going? They're going to the forts, to the army, to the long swords, to the enemies of your people. Liar. Liar! Liar? 
Well, why don't you ask the Senor's Cartwright, huh? Well. <laughs> Proud hunter. Hey. How's it feel to put new weapons into the hands of the whites, huh? With those horses, they will hunt down, perhaps, your own tribe, huh? <laughs> Bueno, Caballo, we shall see if you are stronger than Martinez. Or thief. You dirty dog eater. You call me a thief? You are the true son of your father, that dog who sold his people to the white soldiers. You will die for those words. said bad words of my father. I told you he was a savage, a wild beast. Put that down, Tatu. Tatu, put it away. Put it away. All right, Martinez. Get back to the bunkhouse. Tatu, you come into the house. We have some serious talking to do. Unless you bring him along. Haas? I was wrong. Let's go. In my tribe, a man alone with a stock is a thief. You're no longer with your tribe. Tatu, we want to help you. But we can only do just so much. There's a school in Santa Fe, and we think you should go there. Like a child? I want to learn, but... Look, we talked it over, and we feel it's a good thing. Now, the decision is still up to you. Santa Fe. I had not thought to leave you, my friends. I had not thought to go to another strange place. Haas, do you wish me to go to Santa Fe? Well, it's not that I, I wish you to go, Tato. It's, 
It's just that, well, you learn better there. They can, they can teach you better than we can. That school in Santa Fe is one of the best there is. Tatu, maybe you can learn something for your people. Like, maybe you can learn how to, how to grow things and show them how. How to, how to get meat and keep it on the table always. No. My people left me to die. I closed my eyes as an Indian and was reborn. Your doctor gave me new life. I will go to your school. In the morning, I want you and me right into Virginia City and we'll pick you up some new duds. And I must cut hair. All right. And a haircut. How's that, huh? How you like it? It's cooler. You get used to that. Oh, here, Paul. Oh, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get you a smaller size before we go home. Come on. I gotta pick up some stuff for Paul. You meet me over to horses after a while, and we'll pick you up another hat, all right? <laughs> Come on, Pete. Hey, show us how to do that heat, big Indian war dance. Hey. Come on, Pete. Let's see you stop those buffalo hey, go to the ground. Me <laughs> war dance. Me war dance. Me big buffalo Watch dance. This. Me oh, big Pete. hunter. Me big warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter, me, big warrior. Go oh, away, kid. Leave him alone. Come on, Pete. Let's do it again. Oh, Come on, Bill. Okay. White men. White savage. The Indian does not laugh at old men. He does not laugh at the sacred way of others. Go away, the white man's things. All right. Hold it. Hold it. Just stay calm. Jake, you and Odie, did you got nothing better to do? Be ashamed. You two tramp beat it. Go on, get out of here. Tattoo, as long as you stand there holding that knife like that, you ain't no different than all the rest of them.
Me, big warrior. a fool, Hoss. But in that old man's face, I saw my people. All of them being laughed at. Yeah. I wish I could say I know how you felt, but... There ain't no way. I'm a white man. Look. Paul's got a little get-together, a little shindig he's cooking up. It's supposed to be a surprise, sort of a going-away party for you. So when you come in, act surprise. Don't you tell nobody I told you here. I will say nothing. Act surprise. So, you and I are white man, huh? <laughs> You're not missing your own party, are you? It's hot inside. Yeah, I suppose it is. Pa loves that fireplace. He keeps it going 12 months a year. I'm kind of thirsty. Want something to drink? Oh, I'd love something. Thank you. All right. How about you? No, thank you. You sure? Oh, you wait here. I'll be right back. Mm. Isn't it just a heavenly night? It will be cold tomorrow. Far in the hills. I do wish you luck in Santa Fe. Thank you. I think it's wonderful of the Cartwrights to send you to school, so you can be civilized. Oh, dear. That's not what I meant at all. It is all right. I know what you meant. Oh, hi, Mr. Cartwright. It's really a heavenly party. Come on. Yes. You too, my friend. You belong in the mountains and in the plains. Tattoo. Last night. You said the Indian world was dying. I cannot get it out of my mind. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. I think if you go to the white school in Santa Fe, Tatu, but then I think you have been in school here on the Ponderosa. You have learned many things you did not know before. You have learned that Love is better than hate. Understanding is stronger than knives. Friendship is wiser than war. And maybe I can teach my people. If... Tatu, let me tell you something. The greatest teacher of them all is your heart. Goodbye, little brother. Oh, no, senor. One of the men has seen him at dawn. He was riding fast up towards Bozing Cliffs, toward the north. Oh, well, he rode off once before. Maybe he'll be back again this time, too. Oh, no, senor. He will not return. He's right, Paul. He won't be coming back. He was an animal. Like I told you, a thief. He took the horse your hospitality, and he left nothing in return. 
I gave him the horse. It was his to take. And he left us everything he could. The only thing he had, this. It'll be dark in about an hour. Better get some landings, huh? Yeah. Why don't we go on back to Ponderosa? Maybe they've seen something back there. Yeah. about wandering off on your own before. You know, try as I may, I can't break him of the habit. Dear Jess, and what does a minister do with a backsliding horse? Now, Pastor Avery. What have you done with the flowers that you were supposed to be? I seem to have dropped them. Well, I'll fetch them, and you can keep an eye on the beast. All right. Something's wrong. Judith. Hey! Pastor, Miss Judith. Oh. Good evening, horse. We're out picking flowers for the church. Well, we're out looking for Jamie. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, I hope nothing's wrong. Well, we have reason to believe that he's been hurt. He's lost. He didn't take the roads. That's where we've been looking, in the roads between the schoolhouse and the Ponderosa. Well, well, we haven't been on the Tully Road. Little Joe's up there. Uh, well, we'll keep our eyes open and say a little prayer. And if there's anything else we can do, Huss, let us know. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, thank you, Miss Judith. Judith. You mustn't let it trouble you, dear. Jess. Hmm? We'd better go back to town. It's getting late. So I'll just uh, pick up the flowers I dropped. I'm sure they'll find him before dark. Jamie. Up thing. Up thing. Uh, you get home yet? No. You not find him? No. What about the other men? Any of them get back? Shorty and Bates come back. They find nothing. I think we better send Paul a telegram. Didn't find him. Not a thing. Did you get a chance to talk to the schoolman? 
Said the same as the youngin said. Jamie's been full of talk all day about picking blueberries. Yeah, we just got back from our shovel house. That's where she reckons we went to. Arv, right over and get that sin off Paul, will you? Well, this thing might be over before your park and get back here from San Francisco. You sure you want to worry him about this? We don't have any right to keep it from him. Yeah, you might drop by the bunkhouse and tell the men to get ready to form a search party for tonight. Tell them to be prepared to search all night if they have to. Thank you. here by this rock. It's Jamie, isn't it? Yeah, it's his rock. taught him the same way he taught me. If he's hurt or he's lost, he knows what to do. Yeah. But if he'd remembered and could, he'd be home by now, wouldn't he? And he ain't. What do you really think? I don't know what to think, Joe. I know we gotta keep up some hope. We gotta hope he's still alive. <sighs> of course, if that wound got infected, he could have blood poison, a fever. He could be holed up somewhere unconscious. I don't know. I don't know what to think. I'll tell you what. You take the other fellows and ride on south, make a sweep down that direction. I got another idea. What? I'm going to go see Judith Corman. Look, Joseph, she knew he was hurt, and she knew he wasn't on the road. Of course she knew. She knew you were searching for him. That's why. No, no, no. Before I got there, she knew. It wasn't so much what she said as the way she said it. You can't believe in that stuff. It's like fortune telling. Well, Joe, we both know that she's been right in the past, don't we? Or lucky. Well, this time, let's hope it ain't all luck.
Oz. 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 Yet? Not yet, Pastor. Looks like we've sort of come to a dead end. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you doing in town? Well, I hoped I could round up some more men. We've still got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, well, if you, if you need an extra man, let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Good luck. Judith, I have something I want to show you. Please, Hoss, don't do that. It's Jamie's kerchief. We found it out on the trail. Judith, when we met out on the road, before I even mentioned it, you knew that Jamie was lost. Just a guess, Hoss? Well, whatever you did know, though. It's just a feeling. Fine, a feeling, a, a power, what have you? Don't call it power. Well, whatever. Judith, I need your help. You were right, Jamie was lost and he still is. I was right about that stagecoach in Montana too, wasn't I? You saw them run me out of there, they'll run me out of here. If I even try to do what you're asking me to do. Judith, this is just between the two of us. I've never mentioned that incident in Montana, and I never will. I can't. Judith. I want you to help me save Jamie's life. If those people in Montana had listened to you, they could have saved their lives. Well, I didn't want to know. I don't want to know things that make people frightened around me, and I don't want people coming around and asking me for help. Besides, sometimes when I know things, I don't always know what they mean. Well, let me decide what they mean. Sometimes I know things, and now I don't know anything. Judith, please try. Look, Hoss, I have, for the first time since I was nine years old, the first chance for real happiness. Jess Avery is going to go to London in three months. He offers me his love. And a share in his peaceful world. Do you want to deny me that? I owe the Cartwrights a great deal. But I really do think that it's very unfair of you to ask. Yeah. Sorry. Good day, Judith.
Caught you. See how your little secrets come out? At last I found out that sometimes Judith Coleman does sit still. My mind was active. Does that count? <laughs> you know, I found no such flower in England. How do you keep them so fresh? That's one of my secrets. Is it? I know another one of your little secrets. You actually managed to get in to see old Mrs. Abernathy. Oh, yes, she is a dear, isn't she? Mm, an impossible old dear. You know, that's what she says about you. Me? What, impossible? Yes, yeah, she thinks you're a bit, uh... I know. She thinks I'm putting on airs and graces. She thinks I'm a visiting British intellectual. <laughs> she obviously doesn't know me. And when she gets to know me, it'll be time for me to leave. Well, you needn't worry. They'll all come round. No. I'm the one who has to come round. And I will, with your help. Neither is the man without the woman, nor the woman without the man in the Lord. You're quoting again? Yes, that's uh, St. Paul's first epistle to the, to the Romans, I think. I find it much easier to quote his words than uh, use my own, especially when I'm writing a sermon. Words are so meaningless. Aren't they? I'm sorry, Jess, I didn't mean what you just said. I just mean that... Well, I guess I mean that there is another sense. Where words are just... Well, they're not good enough, are they? What's troubling you, Judith? Won't you tell me? I mean, this isn't like you. I'm sorry, Jess. It's just one of my moods. I have them occasionally. I hope they'll only be occasionally. Well, I... I expect you to be human. As I hope sometimes uh, you will forget that uh, I'm a minister. Can you forget that you are? Well, I'll try. your future husband. Won't you tell me what's wrong? The boy, Jamie Cartwright, that's... what... That's really all that it is, Jess, that's all. Don't worry about him. I mean, they'll find him. Yes, but suppose they don't. Then we'll pray. We'll have a prayer meeting. We must have faith, Judith. You know, faith can move mountains. Suppose were another way. But there couldn't be another way, could there? There isn't another way, of course not. All set? Right. All out, folks. She's ready to roll. I sure hope you get there in time. I mean, that they find him. Yeah, thank you. I sure appreciate you speeding up the relay. No. You worked as hard as anyone hooking them horses up. Maybe you could slip a little to the driver. He's got the hard chore ahead. I'll do that. And I'll uh, spell him a bit if he needs it. Don't forget to telegraph Virginia City. Give him your best estimate as to when we'll be getting in. All right. string. Yes, Hoss. 
Follow the stream. Follow the stream. Anybody, but you have young lady wait for you. Oh. Miss Judith. Oh, hello, horse. I guess I've only been thinking of myself, haven't I? Oh, you're here. That's all that counts. Sit down, please. Thank you. He must be cold. Something's come to you. His shoulders hurt. He, he maybe fell? No, I'm, I'm sorry, Hoss. Something's hurt him. Something big. Like a bear? There's bear up in those woods when the blueberries are ripe. They don't normally attack, but they will. They can be awful mean. Could that be it? I knew that you were going to come back to me if you didn't find him. Hoss, it, it is so easy for me to misinterpret what I see, or, or for people to misinterpret what I say I see. They make it into whatever they want it to be, you see? And that's why they think it's something ugly in me. <laughs> well, but you've always used it right. I mean, you've helped people with it. You're helping us now. Well, at least I know now that I can't stop and I can't run away to England. That was just a foolish dream. You haven't told Jess about this? You know what he'll say the minute he finds out. You told him nothing about it? Do you know who led that mob that drove me out of Montana? A minister, Hoss. A righteous man of the cloth. Yeah, but he was no, no Jess Avery. Hot coffee! Uh, here, why don't you take your wrap off and sit down? Thank you. And a little food. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, Hoss, I've never understood why this thing happens to me or how it happens to me. But it uses me. I don't use it. Well, I hope that, that you decide that you can help us. And if you do, I promise you that it'll be between just the two of us. It must be, Hoss. It's not just a matter of my losing Jess. That's just a dream. But if this town finds out, then I have to leave. And it means running again, and maybe not finding friends like the Cartwrights. You want a better promise? I suppose I do. Well, I'd like to promise you the world, Judith. But I can't do that, obviously. But I want Jamie back, and I want him back bad. I promise you that if anybody finds out about it, you won't have to run. All right, horse. This afternoon, I was out riding. And I saw a little red-headed boy fall to the ground. I was thinking of Jamie. And I got an impression of bubbling water. Bubbling water, like a creek or a spring. Yeah. There's three creeks out at Washoe Bluffs. Well, uh, is any one of them in particular a favorite of his? No, not that I know of. Is there something that stands 
slender, something I think he's very fond of. Like a tree? Um, yes, but it's smaller and it sways. And I, you know, I feel that it belongs to him. A feather? A feather, that's he's, it, it's a feather. He's got a feather in his hat. Uh, and he, he bends and he drinks, and he drinks water. Yeah, and what? Oh, I'm sorry, Oz. I can't tell you anything more than I know. I know it's so little to go on. No, no, no. It's quite a bit. It's plenty to start on. Oz, nothing has meant more to me than the friendship and the kindness of the Cartwrights. Judith, I think you should consider telling Jess about this. I, I know him, and I think he'll understand. No, Oz, no, he won't. Where's Haas? He's up ahead somewhere. I don't know why we're looking here anyway. Haas has his reasons or we wouldn't be here. Seems to me we've already lost half a day. out there, you'll have to leave a trail. <laughs> Nothing down here but me and a played out horse. Hoss is working his way upstream. Why don't you work your way through the woods? We'll meet back where Hoss found the hat. I well, get everything right so far, anyway. Yeah. Then he went straight into the woods. I've told him a thousand times when he's lost to stay out of the woods. And we lost his trail once, we'll find it again. Yeah, the same way. I'm gonna go get Judith. Well, come on, Hoss. We'd have followed this stream anyway. We'd have found the hat without her. I don't think so, Joseph. She said a stream or a spring. I don't think I'd ever come this far from Marshall Bluffs. You take the men, send them on in. What do you mean, send them in? I gotta protect her secret, Joe, and I don't think she'd ever come down here if she thought those men were here. All right, I'll send them back for fresh horses, but I'm not gonna keep them from coming back out here. An hour's all we need. Head back to the ranch, get fresh mounts. Message from Mr. Cartwright. He'll be in the stage at seven o'clock. Wants his horse left here. Joe says for him come straight to Masaka Lake. Ain't found the boy yet, huh? No, but if we do, in the meantime, we'll let you know. Hey, Hob. Pastor Avery, have you had any success yet? Some, but not enough. Oh boy, you must all be exhausted. We are, sir, but we got to keep trying. Hey, Hav. Yes. 
He's climbing. Could he be climbing? Well, where would he climb? Just up, Joe. A wounded animal will always climb. I can't believe he'd climb, not in the shape he's in. That's probably just the reason he's doing it. If the boys hurt bad, he'd head for the high country. I right, will start at the top. I'll work down. I saw him in a dark place. You mean like, like a cave? No. Pause it. Well, it could be something worse. Now, you're doing what you told me not to do. Trying to make something out of nothing, maybe. Isn't that Miss Corman down there? Yes. I wonder what she's doing here. Joe found something. Sounds like someone found something. What are you doing here? I'm just trying to help. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, hasn't someone told you? Why else would you know to come? Uh, these people are my parishioners. It's my duty to be here. Oh, yes, it's your duty to warn the wicked away from her way before she dies of her iniquities. It's usually shouted at me. I'm sorry, I don't quote it quite correctly. It's from Leviticus, isn't it? Or is it Deuteronomy? I don't understand you, Judith. I... I've never shouted the scriptures at you. I thought you had a faith that was fine and strong. Why do you mock it now? I don't mock it. The things that happen to me make my faith only stronger. Don't talk riddles, sir. Just give me a simple explanation. Very well. Simply, I see things. I see things and I know things other people don't see and don't know. How? I don't know how. I don't know. My mother called it second sight. But whatever it is, I'm not pretending. I don't pretend, especially with a child's life. Judith. <laughs> Do you really believe that you have this boy's life in your hands? Jess, I'm not asking for it. People come to... Oh, no, Jess, no. No, 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 not my hands. God's hands. Oh, Judith. Do you really believe that you have special powers? Not power, Jess. Don't say power. I don't want power. How can I make you understand that what I see, I know. I know it as surely as I know that I am or that God is. And when you were talking to Hoss just now, were you telling him something you think you've seen? Yes, that I think I've seen. And I'm going to find him and tell him. Judith! Judith! Judith. Judith! Judith, look, we have to talk. Well, not now. Please, the Cartwrights are in desperate need. Look, the Cartwrights are expert trackers. They're woodsmen, they're plainsmen. They don't know where to look. 
And you do? Yes, I have seen. Then we'll try and find that place together, you and I. But don't lead the Cartwrights off on a wild goose chase. Jess, you don't believe me. Now you have a chance to prove yourself. <laughs> Let up some. He's been gone here about an hour. Harv, you go on up where Joe is and see if he's found anything. I want to look around here for a while. Jamie! Jamie! Hot! Where are you? Over here, Pastor! We heard a shot in the news yet? Well, we, we found a trail. I don't know how long it's going to last. Harv told me you were going to come out and help us. Yeah. Pastor, this is my doings. I put her under a great deal of obligation. I understand. Look, Hoss, uh, if you found a trail, uh, I'm sure you'd like to follow it. Uh, we'll stay here and rest a while. Thank you. Hoss, um, I'd like to tell you something. Judith. There's something I've seen. Possibly you will have recognized it. It's, it's shaped like the hat. There's a, a tree that stands against the sky. It's like the feather. Like a lone tree? Yes, only it's growing out of, out of boulders. Well, I, I ain't seen nothing like that so far, Judith. But if I do, I'll recognize it. Thank you. Is that where he is? Thank you. Judith, I thought we agreed not to involve the Cartwrights. I don't think that we agree about hardly anything at this point. Well, let's try. Do you agree that perhaps you should have told me about this, um, this second sight? Perhaps. Well, why didn't you? Because... I was afraid of losing you. And I didn't want to take the chance. I mean, how could you know? I mean, I... I trusted you. I, that's why I asked you to marry me. I think perhaps you owed me a little trust in return. All right. All right. Suppose that I had told you what I told you today. Would you have reacted any differently than you did just right now? No. No, I would have said... Uh, I would have said, believe what you want to believe, but don't involve others. Well, they involve me. Yes, I know, but supposing the boy is found dead five miles away from the place you told him to look. Could you live with that? Could I live with not telling them what I think I see, oh, and don't... then he would be found alive? Look, don't play God. Apparently, you don't believe in what I'm doing. No, no, I don't. No. You are not the first minister to call me witch or accursed and to cast me out. But don't you worry, Jess. A witch would never consider marrying a man of the cloth. Hey, wait, Harv. This way. That way? Yeah. What would you do if you was lost, Harv? It's what I told Jamie, I imagine. Take an objective. A goal you can keep your eyes on. You get to it, pick another goal. There you go. Just like that big knob rock up there, that lone pine out of it. Come on. Was. 
Paz. Paz. I'm so cold. It's all right. It's all right, little buddy. Man, you're a mite hungry, too, aren't you? Joe. Joe. You'll be all right. You know, I, I, I gotta thank you for helping to look for me. Don't thank me. Thank your brothers. Why, they never gave up searching for you. Not for a second. And everybody searched day and night. Yes, ma'am, I know. Why don't you get some sleep, huh? Okay. Oh, wait a minute, not yet. Doctor said you had to take some of this, little brother. All right. There you go, drink him right down. Very good. Thank you, Hans. Good night, pal. Good night. Well, I just didn't know there was so much prejudice in this part of the country. Well, you have it in your small English villages, don't you? Yes, but uh, we gave up burning witches years ago. Well, so did we. Oh, I don't know. I don't suppose the time will ever come when people won't fear the strange and mysterious. Well, I pray for that day. And work for it too, Pastor. I agree. Tell me. Do you honestly, seriously believe that Judith found your son? Well, I guess that's not as important as the fact that she believes it. And Hoss believes it. That Jamie is here now. Tell me. What do you believe? I'm not sure. I do know, though, that in every other way, Judith is a very extraordinary woman. Yes, she is. Well, I think I'll look in on Jamie. He's finally fallen off to sleep. Joe and Horst just won't leave him. I think you and Jess have a great deal to talk about.
You've been convicted by a jury of your peers of the murder of a Ponderosa cowhand, name of Walter Finn Harrell, which he come to town to play a friendly game of stud poker and wound up getting himself killed. It is therefore considered and ordered by this court that you, Isham Troxel, shall suffer the punishment of death by hanging in the week commencing Sunday, September 6th, the year of our Lord, 1868, and may God have mercy on your miserable soul. Your Honor, my brother's name. Let that to be my... a lesson to any other scissor, Bill, which they get caught with an ace up their sleeve and try to shoot their way out of it. Your Honor. Court's adjourned. I demand a hearing. Don't worry, guys. He ain't going to get away with this. Judge? Ben? Boys? Judge Owen. When are you coming out to visit us again? Not soon. Socializing after a hanging case ain't quite seemly for a man in public office, but I thank you kindly. I want a word with you, sir. The case is closed. If my brother dies because of that preposterous sentence of yours, you'll die too. Just as sure as my name is Cato Troxel. You're a bigger fool than I thought you was, Troxel. Make a threat like that in front of all these witnesses? I mean it, sir. Then it'll be Troxel and Troxel on Boot Hill. Instead of in that new law office across the street. If my brother hangs, I'll kill you. And I won't end up on Boot Hill. I'm going to let that last remark go by for two reasons. First, your blood brother just got sentenced to hang, which it would naturally lather you up a mite. Second, because it's 12 o'clock noon, and it's time for me to go home and eat my dinner. Fried chicken, northern style. <laughs> Hey, you know, I think there's something wrong with me. I really do. I really do. Look, here I am. I'm a, I'm a young man. I, I got a little money in the bank. I, I don't want to go someplace, see something different. Like where? Like where? I don't know. Back east. Look at all the places I can go. Like St. Louis, Kansas City, Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Why would you want to go to Cincinnati? I don't want to go to Cincinnati. That's what I think is the matter with me. I ought to want to go to Cincinnati, but I like it here. Sometimes, Joe, there ain't no way of figuring out mine of yours. I know what you mean. That's bothering me, too. You're looking for something different. Maybe coming right over there. You was a bossy looking galoot. <laughs> With two sons, one fat and one pretty. Yes, that uh, seems to be a pretty fair description. Uh, this is Hoss, the fat one. And uh, this is the pretty one, Joe. And uh, who are you? Oh, oh I I'm George. And that there's my Uncle Enos. Enos Blessing, at your service, sir. Well, Mr. Blessing. How do you do, sir? I am here to remind you of your mortality. Someday, a stone like this is going to mark your final resting place. Well, there's a happy subject just before supper. Sad, <laughs> ain't it, mister? But one of these days, them boys are going to have to buy you a stone just like that one. Now, now don't you believe it, Pa. We'd oh, never no. let you down like We've that. We've got a more expensive No, we'll get a great big course. granite yeah, thing. Paul, we're going to buy you an expensive one. I mean, a great big one. We're going to put it your name on. It's going to say Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. Well, thank you board. very much, boys. It's really very touching your concern for me, but I feel rather hale and hearty at the moment. I don't think I can use one of those just yet. Ah, exactly. What could a cold stone say of this handsome gentleman? Could it speak of his warm smile, of his upright character, of his manly appearance? Certainly not. What he needs is a different kind of memorial. Uh, you know you're right. You're absolutely right, and he's got one. His fine sons, we will be his memorial. Hey, yeah, that's right, Thorne. Don't you forget it. Yes, indeed, boys, you certainly will be. But what kind of different memorial were you thinking of? Well, I was thinking, sir, of a photograph. Ah, a photograph? Oh, uh, like a tintype, only it's uh, that's, that's a new process, isn't it? Quite right, sir. A veritable likeness. 
produced by the chemical action of light, on paper sensitized by the mysterious properties of precious metal, to reproduce his very image. George? George? The samples. Oh. Is George... Uh... George is my niece. Oh. Is that where you, you do your work in that contraption? Uh, yes, sir. That is my travel and portable dock room. I have just opened a new studio in Virginia City. Have you? Enos Blessing, portraits in silver. Uh, the samples, George, if you please. You should do very well there. Uh, thank you, sir. May I show you some of my work? Vice President of the Union Pacific. Hmm. Ship Captain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sheriff. Very good. Oh, how did this get in here, George? The, the, the horse thief. <laughs> horse thief. <laughs> hey, you know, Paul, they're pretty fancy. You know what we could do? We could frame you and hang you right up over the fireplace. Yeah, well, what you should ought to do is get one taking a beach of you, and then you could hang them all up together. <laughs> hey, exactly. A father and his sons. What an inspiring subject. I could do it right here, right in front of the house. Ah, as a matter of fact, I can even throw in a group picture of all your ranch hands. Hey, hey you, you, you know the fellows that like that? Yeah. Oh, right now, I mean, it's supper time. Uh, no, 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 that would be tomorrow, uh, when the light's a little better. Uh, that is, if you could bed me down for the night. I think we'll do it, Paul. I'm all for it. That'd be a bad idea. Certainly, of course, we can put you up in the bunkhouse and we have a spare room for your niece. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Uh, George has to go back to town for some supplies. Come here. It is nice, huh? I want that new hypo. It's back at the studio. We have plenty of... Shh. I want the new hypo. And listen, when you get into town, I want you to find Mr. Cato Troxel and tell him I'll be making the Cartwright pictures at noon tomorrow. Do you understand? No, why do you... Want... Never mind why. Just do it. And be back here early tomorrow morning. Yes, come on. Yes, sir. I'm just waiting for Mr. Hoss. Which horse? Can't you hurry up, Hoss? Well, well, we can't hurry this, Mr. Cartwright. This is going to take all morning. All morning? Yeah, well, this is a complicated chemical process. I have to prepare every one of these plates in the dark room before I can expose them. So long. Mm-hmm. Well, I figured we'd only get our picture took. I didn't want to look like no saddle wrap, so I've been in there dudin' up. Now, mm-hmm. uh, get him post, George. I'm just loosen up now, Mr. Haas. You're stiffer than a hard-shelled deacon. Mm-hmm. All of you. The whole side better off to settle with that tombstone, I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Now, look this way, everybody. I want you to watch, Georgie. That's fine. Now, smile. Dignified, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, that's fine. Now, now, hold it. Now, watch the birdie, Mr. Haas. Beep, 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 beep. That's fine. Hold it. <laughs> All right, now, smile. Now, that's fine. Now, hold that. <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? 
You think it's funny I got my picture taken? <laughs> You're gonna get your picture taken now. No, 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 just a moment. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, you're forgetting. I promised a picture of you and your whole bunch. All the cowboys and all the visitors, everybody. Complimentary, no charge. Oh, that's a good deal for a hurt one. Well, why not? We've wasted the whole morning anyway. Sure. Yeah. All right, that's fine. All right, now, everybody, line up over there. Set now. All right now. Everybody freeze now. And smile a little. Oh, that's just fine. Miss Neely, I'm here. I made you a promise, sir. I'm here to keep it. I'll make you one. You pull that trigger, you'll hang higher than your brother did. Take a little ride somewhere. I want to talk to Mr. Troxel private. Did you make them? Yeah. The group photograph, too? Yeah. Do you have the plate prepared? Certainly. All right, get out your camera. Not before I see the color of your money. <laughs> Here you are, you can count it later. Well, I guess I'll be arrested as soon as I ride into town. Yeah. There'll be a coroner's hearing in the morning. That's enough. I don't want to hear about it. I don't know how I get in this in the first place. Well, you got into it on account of Georgie, Enos. That was a very unselfish thing for you to do. But all I care about is, will it be ready in the morning? It'll be ready. It better be. It'll be ready. Now, you, you just get in front of the camera. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. That's too close. You'll have to go back about five, six feet. Right there. That's fine. Now, turn around face me. Now, don't move. All right, now, hold still. Ready? Sure do like them car rides. What do you want to talk to me about, Uncle Ease? Well, you... Uh, just give me a little time. I'll get around to it. Sure do like that little Joe. <laughs> He's as handsome as a new steamboat. Didn't you think so? He sure is handsome. <laughs> I saw you gawking at him. He didn't see me gawking at him, did he? That's not the point. The point is, was he gawking at you? 
no. Of course not. He thought you was a boy. Just look at yourself. When did you wash your face last? Forget. Exactly. Well, you're all through being a tomboy. You're going to a female academy back east to learn how to be a lady. Oh, that old subject again. How can I go to a female academy? Ten places cost big money. I got big money. Yeah. Well, go on, go on, open it. Twenty dollar gold pieces. Fifty of them. A thousand dollars. Where'd you get all this? Well, you might say it's my life savings. Oh, Uncle Enos, I don't want to go to no female academy. I want to stay here with you. Well, you can't stay here with me. You're going back east to school, to, to Illinois or Missouri. I don't want to be a lady. That's fine. I'll join a medicine show. I'll become a saloon girl. I'll marry a gambler. You can marry a Paiute if you want to, but not until you're a lady. I'm going to help you pose your pictures and, and work with you in the dark room and, and poach your eggs the way you like them. I'll poach my own eggs. Then you did not hear the shot, Mrs. Neely? Might have, might not. I was cooking, using pine knots to get a hot fire, and everything was popping and snapping. Well, just one more question, Mrs. Neely. Uh, what time would you say it was when you discovered the body of your husband? Well, I can't say exactly, Doc, but uh, I think I can come to it through my fried chicken. I always give my chicken a good 40 to 45 minutes, put it on about half past 11, because he adjoins his court right at noon. Then it takes him 10 minutes to come home, feed his horse. Then he washes up and sits down at a quarter past. I mean, he used to. <laughs> anyway, uh, my chicken was just about done when I heard him come riding up. And uh, he didn't come in, and he didn't come in, and so I went out to see what was keeping him, and there he was. <laughs> Fried chicken was his favorite. Then you would say that he was shot a few minutes after 12 o'clock noon? Yes, sir. That's all, Mrs. Neely. Thank you. Ben Cartwright, will you take the stand, please? Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Be seated. On Tuesday, September 1st, did you overhear a conversation between Judge Neely and Cato Troxell? Yes, sir, I did. Would you like to tell us about it? I'm right over there. I heard Cato Troxell threaten Judge Neely. He said that if his brother was hanged, he'd kill Judge Neely. Thank you. That's all, Dan. Thank you. Just a minute. Acting as my own attorney, I'd like to ask the witness a few questions, if I may. I guess it's your right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cartwright, yesterday a man named Enos Blessing came to your ranch and took a group photograph of you, your cowhands, and all your visitors? That's right. At what time was that group photograph taken? About uh, a little after 12 noon, I guess. Well, then, anybody who was at the Ponderosa at the time that group photograph was taken couldn't possibly have shot Judge Neely, huh? Oh, well, no. Don't you remember seeing me there at uh, 12 noon or a little after? I certainly did not. Well, you were facing the camera at the time the photograph was taken. All your visitors were lined up behind you. Yes? And I could have been there, and you mightn't have seen me. Well, why would you want to come to the Ponderosa? I came to make you an offer on your Lake Tahoe property. Mr. Corner, he didn't make me any offer on any Lake Tahoe property. Well, you were so busy, I thought it better to come back another day. No, sir, he didn't make any... Thank you, sir. That'll be all. Mr. Corner, may I testify on my own behalf? That'll be all, Mr. Cartwright. 
You may take the stand now, Mr. Troxell. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, say help to God. I do. Gentlemen, I'd like to make a statement for the record. Yesterday, at a few minutes after 12 noon, I was at the Ponderosa when that group photograph was made. And the photograph will prove it. You were in the photograph? I was. Consequently, I couldn't have been in Judge Neely's stable at the same time. Where is this photograph now? Well, I don't rightly know. I suppose Mr. Blessing has it. Let's see my photograph. This hearing is adjourned to the photographer's place. The jury, the witnesses, and the prisoner will come along with me. Where's you going to get your pony shod today? Yeah. Well, go on and do it. Does it have to be in that slab-sided east? Ain't there no female academies in this whole big eagle spreading west? No. And go tend to your pony. Right now. Yeah, yes, sir. I'm Dr. Martin, county coroner. We're holding a hearing in the death of Judge Neely. Ah, oh, yes, sir. I heard about that. Would it be all right if I bring my jury in, please? Oh, of course. Thank you. You may come in, gentlemen. Now, did you take some photographs yesterday at the Ponderosa? Ah, uh, yes, sir, I did. I'd like you to produce them for the inspection of the jury, please. Oh, well, now, uh, those are the property of Mr. Cartwright. And, uh... Oh, Mr. Blessing, I wish you would produce those photographs. Uh, yes, sir. The one you made about noon yesterday, the big group photograph. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, here it is. the jury? Looks like our verdict is clear. Death at the hands of an unknown party. Well, I guess you won't be needing me any further. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, for furnishing me with an alibi. Good day, gentlemen. Seen that photographer. Hey, Troxel, a perfect alibi. Well, if Troxel's innocent, Joe, I'm glad we did see the photographer. I'd hate to see an innocent man hang. Well, I say he's guilty. Well, Joe, there he is, right there in the picture. Did you show the picture to all the hands? Yes, of course I did. Nobody remembers seeing him there. Well, look, what about the men in the back from the Double H? Maybe we went over and talked to them. Maybe they know something. Joe, what good's that going to do? If he's here, he is here. And he's there in the picture. All right, so he was here. Wait a minute, suppose Judge Neely's wife made a mistake about the time he came home. Look, she testified she was in the kitchen, there was a lot of noise, she couldn't hear anything. Suppose he got home at 11.30 instead of 12.15. He'd had Joseph, plenty of time to ride Joe, back out of here. Joseph, everybody knows that Judge Neely was a man of habit. He was punctual. At 12 o'clock sharp, he shut his court. At 12.15, he was home having lunch. At 1.30, he opened up court again. People set the clock by him. It's gonna be something. All right, he was here. All right, he was here on the Ponderosa when the picture was taken. 
Suppose he didn't kill the judge. Suppose he hired somebody to kill him. Troxel's got plenty of money. There's plenty of guns for hire in Virginia City. All right, what are you going to do? You're going to go around to everybody who wears a gun and say, did uh, Cato Troxel hire you to kill Judge Neely? Is that what you're going to do? No, I'm going to go talk to Cato Troxel. Oh. And what's he going to tell you he didn't tell the coroner's jury? Oh, maybe the coroner went about it the wrong way. I guarantee you I can make him talk. Oh, can you? How, with your fists? Yes, if I have to. Oh, very good. By all means, use your fists. Why don't you try using your head sometime? You might eventually get someplace. Well, go on, start swinging. Haven't seen a good fight in weeks. You're not going to see one now, either. We're having a family talk. Is that any of your business? Uh, no, not at all. Well, then why don't you stay out of it? Go take a ride or something. Joe. You mean you're not extending the famous Cartwright hospitality? All right. The boys said the picture was here. I'll just uh, have a look at that and leave. <laughs> well, go on with your family discussion. <laughs> Were the boys... Um, Resisting one of your fatherly lectures, Mr. Cartwright? I'm not the habit of giving fatherly lectures. And if I do, it's possibly because they're needed. Might have been a good idea if your father had given you a few. Oh, he did? Well, obviously, they didn't have much effect. Oh, yes, he did. I left home. I can understand how Troxel got into the picture, but I can't understand how he got this shadow on the side of his face. What are you talking about? Well, you've got a funny kind of sun at the Ponderosa because it casts shadows in two different directions at once. Well, that's kind of impossible, isn't it? I don't want to give any fatherly lectures. But that's a shadow, isn't it? Yes, it is. And do you see shadows on anybody else's face? Funny, isn't it? You think that's funny. You should have seen what happened to me in St. Louis once. A young fellow was uh, doing a couple of tin types of me. He was new in the business. He got mixed up and he put both pictures on the same picture. And I came out looking like twins. What's that got to do with Cato? Well, I didn't say it had anything to do with Cato, but uh, just thought I'd throw it into the general pot of interesting information. Can we? You said this, uh, this fellow made. Two pictures of you on the same picture. Same picture. Call it a double exposure. <sighs> now, if a, if a photographer can, can make two pictures on the one picture, a mistake, why couldn't he do the same thing on purpose? Couldn't Troxel, who got Mr. Blessing to make this Double exposure, We're putting Troxel in this picture without Troxel having been here in the first place. I think somebody better go have a nice talk with Troxel and ask him some questions. No, 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 not yet, not yet. What are we going to do? Well, just let me think for just a minute, will you? Now, if, if this is a photographic trick and there are two people involved in this murder, Mr. Troxel and the photographer. Now, let's take Mr. Troxel. He's got a legal mind. Huh? He thinks things through very carefully. He'd be prepared for almost any eventuality. Our photographer friend, Mr. Blessing, he's a different kind of man. I think he could be persuaded to help us out. But, Pa, what are we waiting for? <sighs> for me to finish this last year and for you to get the horses ready. Now, let's get. Now, 
George. Oh, howdy. Can I help you? Well, I was looking for your Uncle Enos. Is he around? Oh, no, sir. He's out on the Carson City cutoff making some pictures. Ah. He sure makes some good pictures, doesn't he? <laughs> he sure does. Had to put that one up because everyone was coming in and asking to see it. Yeah. Tell you what, George. George. Huh? George, you tell your Uncle Linus I'd like to have one of these for every single person in it. Oh, I sure will. I'll tell him the minute he comes back. Yeah, you know, the, the hands were all real pleased with the picture because it turned out so good. You know, we had one fellow had a picture taken in St. Louis. It was terrible. Funny, he had two heads and everything. <laughs> the double exposure. Must have been a beginner. Uncle Enos doesn't make mistakes like that. We'd better be getting along. Tell your Uncle Enos we were in the scene. We'll see him again. Sure will. Bye. See you, George. is out in the country. I sure want to see him. I always wonder if we go over to the courthouse, finish up that business of ours. Candy, I'd like you to stay here. Keep an eye out. As soon as you see Enos come back. Right, get us. Right. I saw Ben Cartwright come in here. I want to talk to him. Come and gone, Mr. Troxell. Oh, well, whatever he wanted, it didn't take him long. Huh? I don't know. He, he came and bought a whole bunch of them group pictures. <laughs> oh? Yeah. Oh, they think a lot of Uncle Enos's work. Uh, probably because uh, one of their hands had a picture taken by a beginner, and they got a double exposure. Double ex... <laughs> whatever that is. Well, thank you. Sure. Let me go, Roscoe. I got... ah, how did you know my name? Ah, how did you know my name? Let me... Candy. Candy, my old friend, Candy. How you been, Candy? I'm in a hurry, Roscoe. Uh, Candy, I want your unvarnished opinion of me. You're an upstanding citizen, Roscoe. Now I gotta go. Thank you, Candy. There's a little apple knocker in there that says I am a big, fat liverwurst. He's drunk. He's belligerent and he wants to fight. You go ahead and fight him. And let me go. Candy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is everybody so unfriendly? <laughs> Jump Scandy in a big hurry. Well, after you left, Troxel came out and went in the photographer's place. And when he came back out, he, uh, he mounted up and rode off south. South? That'd be the Carson City cut That's what Venus is. Well, let's go. I'll get my horse and catch up. Let's go. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you whip this little old stinker for me, we'll go get a bottle of booze and a couple of girls, and we'll have a time. <laughs> Sorry, Roscoe. It's going to have to be later. You know, for an upstanding citizen, I'm down more than I'm up lately. 
<laughs> what are you doing here? I came to warn you about the Cartwrights. They're after you about Judge Neely. How do you know? What happened? Well, they went to your studio looking for you. You mean they were looking for you, don't you? You're the one who pulled the trigger, not me. Now, you know there are only two people who know that? You and I. And that puts me in a very unfortunate position. Why? Well, they're going to want you to talk, and you probably will. Oh, no, no. You know I won't talk. I wish I could believe that. No, but, uh, why would I talk? Because you're a born loser, oh. Enos. It's an old adage. Never trust a loser. No. Now you're a dead loser. trucks will kill Mr. Blessing the same as the judge, and I'll stake my life on it. But, Joe, I can't arrest a man without evidence, and there ain't a shred. You heard the verdict. Death at the hand of a person or persons unknown. Motive, robbery. And Enos had a thousand in gold on him. You're absolutely right. We heard George testify to that. And were any clues at all, Sheriff? None? Listen, I haven't had any sleep in three days. If any of you think you can do better, put on a star. Now, Milo, nobody's criticizing you. Well, I'm doing the best I can, and that's all I can do. Of course, we understand. How did Mr. Blessing's niece hold up at the funeral? Oh, well, as well as could be expected, I guess, under the circumstances. She certainly did. The fine young girl, and it's about time I went to call on her. Uh, Milo, you get yourself a good sleep now. You're not the first peace officer who's had an unsolved murder in his hands. See you, Milo. Oh, you want us to go with you? No, I'll go by myself. See you back at the ranch. Right. like a very interesting idea. I... Didn't, didn't uh, Uncle Lena say something about him wanting you to go to a female academy? Oh, I ain't got the money for a female academy. I want to be a female photographer. The first one this side of the Rockies. Well, that's, that's a very laudable ambition. 
You, you think you could uh, do it? Sure I can. Come on, I'll show you. I'm making some friends. Here, give me your hand. It's awful dark in here. I've been working with Uncle Enos for about a year. I can pose the pictures. You've seen me do that. And I can work the camera. I've done it lots of times. And I've been helping him in the dark room, and, well, I think I can do it. What's that you're working on? These are the pictures Uncle Enos took that last day. He thought maybe he could sell them to a magazine. So I thought if, if they turn out, well, maybe I can sell them. Sure, why not? Good idea. Maybe I can help you. Oh, would you? Could you write a letter for me? I, I can't write very well. <laughs> of course, I'd be glad to. <sighs> Thanks. Mr. Cartwright, does the sheriff have any idea who done it? No. Not a one. That's awful. That's just awful. That a man can do something like that and get away with it. Oh, look. They're coming out. Look! Look! <laughs> Friendly. I came by to see if you might be interested in buying one of my Lake Tahoe properties. I have no further interest in your Lake Tahoe property. What are your interests, Mr. Troxell? Chiefly getting you off my back. You're becoming a nuisance, Cartwright. You're libeling my reputation, besmirching my character, and damaging my legal practice. I want it stopped. If it isn't, I'm going to take you to court. Court? You know... I think that might be the last place I'd want to be if I were under suspicion of murder. Now, if you're referring to the murder of Enos Blessing, there isn't a way in the world you can connect me with that crime. And if you mean Judge Neely, I've been exonerated by photographic evidence. And photographs don't lie. Yes, you're right. Photographs don't lie, I must agree with you. That's why I thought you might be interested in this photograph. Photograph exonerates me of murder. The other one convicts me. Old Marcus would have scorned me. Marcus? Marcus Porky Esquito. The noble Roman I was named for. Cato the censor. The enemy of crime and corruption. Cato. A very model of every Roman virtue. <laughs> <laughs>
Just like the judge predicted. Troxel and Troxel. On Boot Hill. You're right only once in a while, you hear? I don't want him to get rusty in the hinges. I'll ride him, Georgie. You? I don't want to come back here and find him sway-backed. <laughs> All aboard, George. Thanks for everything, Mr. Cartwright. You're right now. Hey, don't forget. Promise to come see us on your vacation. Well, I hope you all recognize me. I'll be as ladylike as a hog on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Take turns cleaning out these water holes, and for some unknown reason, Candy always gets the messiest job. <laughs> yeah, just seems like some fellas never have no luck, don't it? Yeah. Come payday, there's gonna be some changes. Changes? What kind of changes? I'm gonna take myself into Virginia City, and I'm gonna get me a brand new set of clothes. I mean, hat, shirt, pants, boots, the works. It ain't gonna be work clothes either. And I'm gonna get myself a haircut. And a shave and a four-hour bath to get this mud out of my hide. I'm gonna get myself all dressed up, and I'm going out among them. Really have some high living, huh? Higher than a courthouse flagpole, brother. Hey, you know, a fella can't do too much of that high living just on a dollar, and that's all you're gonna have if you get through buying all them duds. Oh, he's not gonna have that much. See, I seem to recall Candy getting an advance from Pa on this month's wages. Oops. They're gonna have enough money for a new handkerchief, let alone do any of that high living. <laughs> All right, I forgot. <laughs> next month. Next month. <laughs> well, we'll see you next month. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be an easier way to make a living. Hey, you keep digging. You might strike it rich. <laughs> we'll see you, Candy. Candidate? Yeah. Did you know a Paiute named Billy Two Biscuit? Paiute? Yeah, I know. Where were you the uh, first week in April this year? What's that to you? Could be very important. First week of April, I don't know. I was in Billy Biscuit's cabin, that's where I was. The uh, the south slope of Squaw Mountain. How was he? Hurting. He broke his leg. Oh, you saved his life. You found him in a snowstorm with a broken leg. You took him to his cabin, nursed him, fed him. If you know all that, what are you asking me for? To make sure you're the right man. Billy Two Biscuit uh, died recently, a snake bite. He made you his sole heir. He left you his mining claim. Poor Billy, poor Billy. Now. I represent Nevada Mining Incorporated. And I'm here to make you one firm take it or leave it offer. $100,000 plus standard royalties for the right to develop and work the mine. 100,000 what? Dollars. 50,000 in cash, 50,000 in shares in Beulah Land Sales and Development Corporation. I have the cash with me. You got something you want me to sign? Yes, sir, I sure do. Here you are. <laughs> right there, the bottom line. Here? Right, that's it. Right. <laughs> How long is it till dinner? Oh, I don't know, about an hour or so, I guess. Thanks. 
sunstroke? Hmm. Could be. Local weed, maybe. <laughs> Hey, buddy, you all right? Yeah, well, all right. Have you ever seen a whole satchel full of money? Look at this. Look at that. Here. Here. Have a sample. <laughs> that's real money. That, 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 that's fine. It's still there. <laughs> it's still real. It's hard to believe. I tell you, that Billy Two Biscuit sure must have thought a lot of you. He was kind of a hermit, Joey. Poor Billy, I don't think he knew anybody else. What are you going to do first, Candy? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about what I'm going to do first. I'm just <laughs> going to float and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. This uh, Beulah Land Corporation, Candy, did Mr. Hornsby tell you anything about it? Just that the stock certificates are in this bag, and uh, I looked, and they are. That's all I know. Mm. I was just wondering. I'd never heard of them. I'll find out and let you know. I want to say that every minute I've spent here has been a pure pleasure. Now, I imagine the biggest one was to clean out that water hole, huh? Oh, yeah, they're fun. <laughs> Even that. I don't quite know how to say this, but uh, I'm in your debt. Oh, I am. I am. If you ever feel a pinch for money, all you have to do is whistle and, and I'll be glad to help. <laughs> Candy, thank you. I'm going to have a party, a big party. Be a favor to me if you could spare Hoss and Joe to help with the planner. Oh, well, if you think that uh, Hoss and Joe are good at planning parties, of course. <laughs> Can you leave now? We're halfway there. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Hang on, Thanks, millionaire. Uh, Candy. I forgot. <laughs> Come on, money bags. Extreme cowboy inherit silver fortune. Read all about it. Extreme cowboy inherit silver fortune. Read all about it. There he is. That's him. Give you a million dollars? Let me see that paper. Yeah, it says right here, a fortune estimated at one million dollars. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, I'm Harriet Caster. We've never really met. We did once. This is my daughter, Ruth. We're having an open house Sunday afternoon at 2. Just good friends, good talk, good food. We'd be delighted if you'd join us. Uh, well, I'd, I'd, uh... Good, good. We'll see you at two. Come along, dear. Want to be among the first? Long had the feeling that you'd be a man of importance. Mm -hmm. uh, H. Parker Smith, Mr. Kennedy. Spent my life in the world of finance. Be a pleasure to serve as your investment counselor. Well, uh, my card, sir. Uh, 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 gentlemen, Mr. Mr. Kennedy has a lot of business to discuss. Uh, if you'll excuse us. Uh, 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 Mr. Kennedy, uh, come uh, right uh, in. If you'll excuse us, uh, gentlemen, please. Excuse me, George. Mr. Williams, excuse me. Please. Excuse me. <laughs> Well, he's a very important fellow. You're Mr. Smith. Did you guys read the papers? I'm the newest millionaire in town. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. How do you like it? Uh, yeah, it's a little small, but it'll do for now. For now. Yeah, for now. Till I uh, knock out a few walls or maybe build myself a brand new one. <laughs> do a lot of entertaining. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot you're invited to Harry Castor's tea party. Put you up there with the best of them. Well, give me a chance to discuss my new stock holdings with some of the rest of them millionaires. You know, I didn't even know you knew Harriet Castor. Where'd you meet her? Hmm. Oh, uh, for the July parade, I told her she was standing on my foot. Oh, well, he really knows her, then. Forty miles of fine print in this thing. Miss Kennedy! Miss Kennedy, it's the hotel manager! Now, Mrs. Kennedy! Mr. Kennedy, it's a hotel manager, Mr. Kennedy. Just a minute. Just a minute. Later. 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 Later.
Well, thank you. Thank you. They were a little busy right oh, now. Oh, yes, of course. Now, I just wanted to assure you that myself and the staff are at your disposal. Stand ready uh, to do anything at all to, to make your stay worthwhile and enjoyable. Uh, special food. Wait, 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 they sell land. That makes sense. Uh, ranches and farms in Beulah Valley. Wherever that is. Oh, didn't it say where? In Nevada. That's all it says. Here, take a look. Yeah, no, ma'am, that's him over there, that surrounded one. Pretty. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. I meant the money. I think I did buy a suit. A suit? When that tailor left here, he was talking about six. Well, a man can use six suits. That jewelry fella had some good-looking watches. Yeah, I saw a good-looking watcher watching your money. The money. The money? Where's the money? Hey. You looking for this? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Why don't you be smart? Put it in the bank. Now, and uh, then let's have a nice cold beer. Huh? What do you mean beer? With your kind of money, I want champagne. I'll take either. <laughs> You'll take both. <laughs> hey, watch it. Well, what's your money? Virginia City's fine. Stack. And what's this? Imported beer. The best. Came all the way from Europe. Right around the horn. Oh, well, it uh, costs a little more, but uh, Mr. Candy can sure afford it now that he's a millionaire. <laughs> if I'm not a millionaire, I can... You ain't changed a bit, Candy. Now, that's the good part. You hit it big, but you're the same old Candy. Thank you. Uh, son of a gun, you. All right. Now, uh, we got the guest list. Virginia ah, City is uh, coming. Now, what about uh, what about music, entertainment? Oh, we're going to have a lot of people. It's going to be a big band, or they won't hear it. Hey, how about the fireman's band? They ain't very good, but they sure are loud. Hey, they are. They're loud. Yeah, all right. Make it two bands. That way the folks won't have to stop dancing when the uh, musicians are out getting a beer. Very good, very good. Two bands, loud. I like that. Penny. Now, what about food? You gotta have some good food. What do you like? Well, Canada. I think we better have a couple of... Jim here. I own the Rocker H Ranch. Oh, I've heard of the brand, yeah. Been building it for 10 years. Fighting Paiutes, Nestors, Rustlers. Well, a fair spread now. I'm getting bigger all the time. That's great. If I want to buy a ranch, I'll look you up. Do you think two is enough? It's well, not for sale. Three, huh? What I'm here for, what's this Beulah Land Company? It says here you're a major stockholder. Oh, yeah, that just happened. I uh, haven't gotten into it yet. I got a brother, little Billy, lives in New York. Got a wife and five kids. He's doing fine, but he wants to come west. So he sold his business and bought himself 200 acres of Beulah Valley orchard land. Good grass, water, roads, bridges. It sounds like a good deal to me. Where is Beulah Valley? I've been in Nevada 20 years. I never even heard of it. Well, I don't know. But I'll find out. If you want to come by the hotel tomorrow, I'll tell you all about it, all right? See me tomorrow at the hotel. Yeah. 
Here you are, Mr. Kennedy. Finest watches in the world. Solid gold nugget chain. Oh, what right that? Somewhere, so the brand new office just opened yesterday. Hey, anybody want to know what time it is? Told us four times in the last three minutes. Hey, hey, there it is, new signs. Huh? What do you mean you don't know? You work here? I just started yesterday. Who does know? Mr. Perry, but he isn't here. When will Perry be here? Tomorrow. He said he'd be here all day tomorrow. Yeah, well, so will I. You better have some answers by then, too. Mm. Gentlemen. Well, here, Mr. Kennedy. All that money it must be wonderful. Oh, when I find out, I'll let you know. Right now, I want to know where Beulah Valley is. Well, like I told that gentleman, I just started working. I don't really know. M Mr. Perry did say it was east of here. Well, so's New York. And the Mississippi. How far east? He didn't tell me. Well, I've ridden all over the eastern part of Nevada, and I never heard of no Beulah Valley. Hey, maybe we can find out at the courthouse. Uh, my new watch says the courthouse is closed. Let's grab some more of that seasick beer. Hey, thanks. Stay. Bring oh. <laughs> uh, coffee now, yes? No, oh, later. Uh, did you order breakfast? Three breakfast. Flight eggs, ham, toast, coffee. Is that all? Plenty breakfast. I.E. knows how much three men eat. Maybe. But I.E. doesn't know how it's cut right. Hey, you've been in there for two hours splashing around. When are you getting out? Been in there long enough to grow fins. Oh, yeah. Well, I promised myself a long, hot bath to get that water hole mud out of my hide, and I'm just collecting it. Go catch him double order of everything, boss. Right. Who, who's that? Oh, that's Ayi. I hired him this morning. I, for what? I needed somebody to fetch and carry. Oh, well, everybody, everybody needs one of those. Of course. We're going to go fetch us some breakfast. You want to come along? No need. Breakfast on its way up. Gee, it's nice to be rich, isn't it? Ah, yes. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> Understand to see good food going to waste. Well, we notice. Hey, here's one from an old friend of yours, a fella named Billy Martingale. Never heard of him. Well, anyway, he wants to borrow ten thousand dollars from you. Hmm. Maybe he's gonna pay it back though, two dollars a week. <laughs> ah, that's all right. He must come from a long-lived family. <laughs> This one from a little girl I went to school with. In a town I was never in. Oh. <laughs> hey, here, here's a beauty. Hey, you didn't go to school with this girl, but you know her real well. Yeah, you ever hear of a girl named Sally Simpson? No. You don't know her? Well, you, you're, you're going to. You better show that to your lawyer. <laughs> hey, here's a little girl that wants to marry me. If I send $3,000, I don't have to come to the wedding. I don't blame her. <laughs> Go away, please. Nobody home. Go away, please. Nobody home. Mr. Kennedy! Atwood Perry! You will answer them. I've got to talk to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let him in. Perry. It's the Kennedy. Yes. Come in. Nice come in. This Thanks. is uh, Joe Cartwright, uh, Hoss Cartwright, friends of mine. Cartwright. Oh, oh, yeah. Would no, you uh, like some breakfast? Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, I was sorry to have missed you yesterday. I yeah. always like to know our stockholders, especially when their holdings entitle them to a seat on the board. What? The board of directors. Your 5,000 shares entitle you handsomely. Uh, may I change my mind and uh, have a cup of coffee? Board of directors? Yeah. A coffee, yes. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll get it for you. Thank you. Um, how do you take it? Uh, just black, please. 
Oh. Ain't that something? Yesterday, the only CD he had was on board a horse. Well, that kind of succeed, though. Hard work and a fella coming along handing you a satchel full of money. That's well, right. You shall not go unrewarded, my friends. Oh, thank you. Look, I brought a little uh, booklet that you might study at your leisure. Tells you all about the corporation. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, we're always on the lookout for a capable young men, you know. Have you uh, ever built a bridge or uh, built a road or maybe dug a well? Yeah, all three. <laughs> you ought to see him clean a water hole. All three? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, then you're my man. You're hired. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Talk to me in a year or two, because uh, until then, I'm going to be doing some resting. Well, I may have said it badly. What I'm offering you is a position as vice president. In charge of field operations. Well, um, Atworth, I'm trying to tell you that I've retired. Well, loafing gets to be pretty hard work. I think you'll find that out in a day or two. Hmm. No, no, and him, I don't think so. Speaking of loafing, we better get back to the ranch. Probably going to think we retired. No. Mr. Barry, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Come gentlemen. Aye, get their hats, huh? Beulah Valley? Mm-hmm. Where's it at? Why, that's right next door to heaven. <laughs> it's probably easier to show you than to tell you about it, and I'll be very happy to do that one of these days soon. Well, we've been living here for a long time. I just never heard of it, that's all. Well, look, since your friends are leaving, why don't you come with me and have a look at your new office? My office? I didn't say I was going to take that job. No, but you said you were going to think about it. You might as well have a look at your new office. Come on. Vice President. Hey, you got my hat? Yeah, if it still fits. <laughs> Thank you. Later, fellas. Later. Yeah, I was just passing Mr. Kennedy. How nice to see you again. Uh, Ruth is thinking of buying a Tennessee Walker, and she'd like to have your advice. With the horses I've been riding, I don't think it'll be much help, but I'd sure like to try. Oh. It's good to know that our new vice president has so many important friends. I'll be in my office to drop by first chance again. Right. I've got your suit ready for Just a take a look Mr. at these handmade beauties. Pardon look, me, look, gentlemen. Look, gentlemen. Look, Mr. Kennedy, look, we were discussing this, weren't we? Yes. Most beautiful workmanship. A real like iron. Now, look, Henny, please, I'm trying to explain to this man. please. Surprise. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you could come by. Can I get you? Oh, I see. Uh, I e already got you. Yes, he got me some tea. Won't you join me? Yeah. Ie. Oh, what? I'm sorry. He he stepped out. He did what? He stepped out. He went to get me some cakes, um, cookies. You want me to have them, wouldn't you? Oh, sure. A whole lot of them, if that's what you want. Sit down. I just came to say hello. You know, I was surprised there wasn't many people in the hall. Well, I think it's because uh, I've already bought everything in town. <laughs> I've met millionaires before, but not like you. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. They were all old and fat and ugly, but you're not. <laughs> well, I'm not uh, old. Or fat, or bald, and you're certainly not ugly. Now that I've found you, I'm I'm wondering what you're gonna do. Oh, I just remember I've uh, I've got a running errand. Oh, this is my lucky day. What? Well, I have nothing to do. I could go with you. One for each of you. Oh, Are you no. serious? <laughs> wow. I, you like yeah, it? Yeah, beautiful. I like it. They're, they're magnificent. He's... But why? Well, you got birthdays coming up sometime. Call them birthday presents. <laughs> well, you can't. It's awfully nice of you, but, you know, they're obviously very expensive saddles, and, well, are well, they just too fine for working stockmen? You know where we're close to church. These are Sunday saddles. 
Every man ought to have one. <laughs> In that case, there's nothing we can say except thank you. <laughs> hey, thanks thank you very much, Kenneth. Right. Hey, thank you, buddy. <laughs> thank you, Kenny. Hey, look, we uh, we got some fresh coffee inside. Why don't you and your friend come on yeah, in? Yeah, come on in. Uh, thank you, but uh, we got to be getting back. Hey, Kenny, did you ever find out where that Beulah Valley was? Uh, not yet, but I took the job. I'm working for Beulah Corporation now, so I'll find out and let you know. Hey, you're vice president, huh? Well, that's what it says on the door. I'll see you. Hey, good luck. Yeah. With everything. Thank you, Candy. You bet. See ya. Oh, these are really magnificent sounds. Wow. Something about you? Yeah. Beulah Valley? Yeah, Beulah Valley. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If it's if it's so beautiful and so marvelous, why has it nobody ever heard of it? People sell ranches for a dollar. Yeah, a dollar made it legal. And then the seller didn't have to tell you what you're buying, neither. You sure then? Of course I'm sure. Of course I'm sure. If you're so smart, how come we rode to four different county seats before we finally came here where all the deed transactions are recorded? Nice day for riding. Besides, I didn't know there was such a place as this until that fellow the saloon told me about it. Now I'm beginning to think there ain't no such place as that Beulah Valley. Well, that's probably just a new name. What we're looking for is a, a transaction of a large piece of land in the name of that. Atworth Perry fellow. Yeah, I'm beginning to think he don't exist neither. Atworth Perry. I do hereby sell for the sum of one dollar. Sections 21, 22, 24, 26, 27, a lot of others. Yeah, Township it. 12. Let's take a look at that map. Yeah. All right, section 21, 22, 24, 26. Uh, never mind the sections, little brother. We've been there. You sure have. Let's go. Thanks a lot. Thank you, gentlemen. glad to see you. There, I have some things that you really must see. Now, I think that red and white... I think blue and gold would be much better. Pretty. Red and white is much more effective. Come into the dining room and I'll show you. Hey, yes, ma'am. I know exactly where the band must go. <laughs> Over here all by yourself? You have plenty of help planning your party. You don't need me. Oh, yes, I do. Mr. Cannon, Mr. Cannon, sorry to disturb you, but I, I can't get those suits ready unless you come in for a fitting. Uh, later. I get the definite idea you don't like parties. You're right. I don't. How about a picnic? I like picnics. I know a spot. I could have somebody hitch up the buggy. We could go down by a little lake. Well, what about Melody? Let her find her own picnic. Um, I'll have the cook pack us a lunch. Candy, you mind taking a little ride with us? Uh, later. I want to show you something, Candy. It's kind of important. Uh, I, I think they're pretty serious about this. You better go with them. Well, I, I, I guess I have to. I'll see you later. Where'd Mr. Canada go? Away.
William Harris said his brother bought from the Beulah Corporation? 200 acres, orchard land, grass, water, roads. What's that got to do with this? You're looking at Beulah Valley. Called Starvation Flat. Mr. Perry changed the name of it. Are you sure? Oh, sure, we looked it up. Perry bought 15,000 acres of this paradise for Beulah Corporation. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Why look at me? Why look at you? You're a stockholder and vice president. Candy, people back east are. Of them are spending every penny they got buying up what they think is good orchard land. They're moving their whole families out here. Bula Valley's a lot closer to hell than it is to heaven. Even the lizards can't grow out there. Sand, alkali, and rocks. You couldn't grow anything but a dust storm on that land. Well, you know you're only partly right. Because water will make all the difference. And the proof is right there in that flower pot. Now, that's soil from Beulah Valley. It's water and a little fertilizer. And it's a healthy plant. But there's no water out there. That valley's a garden spot compared to what you're selling. It's a completely legal operation. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We have not and will not break any laws. You told Jim Hare's brother he's buying orchard land. That's got to be fraud. Why don't you sit down, Mr. Kennedy? Because I think the time has come for me to tell you some of the facts about corporate life. I'm listening. Beulah Land Development does not sell land to individuals, but only to the Beulah Land Development Company. Now, that's a separate and, and individual entity. That's a sales organization with offices in the major cities back east. So they do the selling, and they tell the lies. Well, the salesmen have been known to exaggerate, but if Mr. Hare reads the contract he signed, he'll find out that he got exactly what he paid for. 200 acres of land. What about the roads and the good grass and the water? The roads will be built, wells will be dug. It's all part of our arrangement and our deal with Beulah Land Development Corporation. When do you start? Well, we're in the planning stage right now. As soon as our plans are completed, why, we'll start assembling the equipment and the crews. When? Well, that's hard to say. Because our vice president in charge of field operations has been much too busy to talk about it. Me? Yes, you. I'm supposed to dig the wells and find the water? That's right, Mr. Kennedy. But there's no water out there. You and I both know that. Well, you may believe that if you like, but I have a little more faith. <laughs> Look, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And it's been that way since the dawn of time. Do you know the Romans even had a, a phrase for it? Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. There's got to be a way to stop you. Now, before you start bucking and kicking and spending a lot of time and money on expensive lawyers, you better stop and think about the stock that you own. It could make you a very rich man. Great fortunes are started just this way. And remember, it's perfectly legal. Send him away. He cheat you blind. Make Kamshaw buy every merchant, 20 cent every dollar. Then he double the bill. This one he multiplied 10 times. There's no beer. How about some real good whiskey? I talked to Perry. Real operation is completely legal. The law can't touch it. What are you going to do? The law can't stop him. What can I do? 
If they sell 15,000 acres of that desert, a lot of people are going to get hurt. Mr. Perry said the Romans had a phrase for that. Let the buyer beware. He also said, all I have to do is sit still, and I'm going to get very rich. Sure, come on in. Candy? Just in time, sit down. I'm here because I'm in trouble. I need your help. Well, sit down. Have something to eat. Tell us about it. I've been trying to figure out a way to stop Perry. I've been having a lot of no luck. The uh, Bueller Land Corporation sells only to corporations outside the state. Is that the trouble? That's right. And they don't make any promises they can't keep. Other corporations do that. Mm -hmm. Have some dumplings. Hop Singh really outdid himself. Hop Singh, bring another plate out here. I'm George Thurston. Is Ben Cartwright here? Yes. George, oh, come on in. <laughs> You're right on time. I try to be. Uh, you must be the Mr. Kennedy that Ben mentioned in his That's telegram. Right, Thank you very much for coming. Well, it's part of my job. Oh, the legislators and the governor feel that the state land commissioner should go where he's needed. I have to tell you, Mr. Perry came to my attention two years ago. Huh? A timber fraud. He was sentenced to a year in jail, but appealed and wiggled free. I found him to be slippery, dishonest. And a complete scoundrel. Excuse my not knocking. But a scoundrel. That's what you called me after the appeal. What are you doing here? I heard you were in town. Now, any documents that you might want to see I have in this portfolio? There you are, Mr. Thurston. He's much too helpful and much too happy, but... We might as well get on with it. If there are any questions, I'll be... Well, I'll ask them. So what is this? Uh, that's the uh, list of landowners. This? Oh, that's the map of Beulah Valley. Just where is Beulah Valley? Um, Beulah Valley is, uh, or was, Starvation Flat. Uh, Mr. Perry renamed it. Here are the names and addresses. Over 200 of them. Men who bought acreage in that waste. Yeah, not from me and not in Nevada. They bought from corporations in the East. Uh, George, I bought... 200 acres right in the middle of Starvation Flat. And I bought them right here in Nevada. Oh, no, you didn't. 
Because I didn't sell it to you. But I did. And I'm a vice president of Beulah Land Corporation. You're fired. <clears throat> I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, uh, Mr. Perry. Uh, George, I bought this land yesterday. 200 acres. Well, well. And uh, what were you promised, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, another marvelous things. Uh, deep wells, sweet water, fertile orchard land, good grass, and all in writing. The sweetest words I ever heard. I'm not going to jail. Now, if you'll just take it very easy, nobody's going to get hurt. Just happened to be passing by the door out there and saw this fellow backing out with a gun in his hand. And how long were you out there just passing the door? It was that you came in. Paul thought it might be a good idea. It was. You gentlemen just escort us. I think we'll take a little walk now and say hello to the sheriff. Hey, I'm a friend. Where are your glasses? Oh, 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 not right now. Uh, some reporters waiting downstairs to talk to George and me. They uh, want to know all about the fuel of Andalus. Arise and decline. <laughs> Can't hurry back. It's a lot more than that. Right. Ruth? Oh, yes. Giving away all that money, well, I, I think it was just wonderful. It wasn't all that wonderful. I, I got the mining claim back. Yeah. <laughs> Boss, have us some more champagne. Yeah. Hey, why don't you stop popping around like a bug in a bottle and relax, enjoy your party. Uh, I will in a minute. I'm ready now. It does have a mine and lots of credit. Unlimited. So they tell me. Well, if you got unlimited credit, how about some more champagne? <laughs> Come right up. Right this way. That's Kennedy. There, there he is, right there. Kennedy. Thank you. What are they going to do for you? My credentials, Howard Fiber, Bureau of Indian Affairs. I understand you recently inherited a mining claim from Billy Two Biscuit, a Paiute Indian, deceased. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I sold it, but I just got it back. My duty is to inform you that all mining claims and properties due under Paiute law, honored and enforced by the United States government and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, become the property of the Paiute tribe upon the death of said owner. I didn't know that. You do now. I've taken over the claim for the Paiute tribe. Good day, sir. Uh, uh, take it back. Take it back. Well, it was a lot of fun while it lasted, folks, but uh, the party's over. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you for immediate payment of your bill. Six suits. I want my money. Me first. Where's mine? General, uh, I gave back the money, you see. And, and, uh, the Indians just took back the mine. All, all I have is this. Oh, oh, the old... Wait a minute. Oh, 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 Nice. Maybe someday somebody will give you another mine or something.
ever have seen. Filthy, filthy. Come payday. Uh, uh, some payday. Well, when you get all the rest of your bills paid back. All right. Some payday. I'm gonna go into Virginia City and buy me that new suit of clothes. Oh, you're gonna have some more of that high living, huh? Oh, well, I know. I've, uh... I've had some of that, and it's hard work. <laughs> this time, I'm gonna find a better way to go. Hey, speaking of going, we better get back to the yeah. ranch. Hey, what time is it? You still got that fancy gold watch of yours, don't you? 